Pretty much the first thing people want to know once they've decided that they're going to get in shape is how long it will take. Maybe that's just human nature, maybe it's our instant gratification culture. Now unfortunately it's quite a difficult question to answer because there's usually going to be a period of time focusing on building muscle, some time focusing on losing fat, maybe some time kind of doing both and then there's also quite a lot of different variables to contend with. How consistent is the person going to be? What are their genetics like? Is their recovery adequate? Now fat loss is generally the easy part of the equation so today I want to focus mainly on the muscle building side of that question. I'm going to try and answer two main questions. First, how fast could a person build muscle under ideal conditions, i.e. what is the best anyone could ever hope for? And second, how fast can you build muscle assuming normal conditions, i.e. what can people typically expect? So first let's just look at the variables that are going to affect how fast you can build muscle. Genetics is something people don't really like thinking about because people with good genetics think that you're undermining their hard work and people with bad genetics think that you're telling them they're doomed and they might as well give up. It's also not really something that you can see or test for. So if you see someone in great shape, you can't say how much of that is down to genetics and how much is down to their sheer dedication. Let's look at an analogy. What's short for a guy like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, 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 There are plenty of people walking around at that height. There are also people playing in the NBA that are seven feet tall. That variance is wild and height isn't even something you can do anything about. Imagine if there were exercises that could make you taller, right? And then imagine if some of the people who were genetically tallest did these exercises day in, day out for 10 or 15 years. Then imagine how tall they would be. And in some sense, that's how you have to think about genetic variance in regards to lifting. Some people are born with an advantage and then a select few of those take advantage of that advantage. It's probably a rough bell curve distribution, but there are 7 billion people on this planet. And so the extreme of that distribution are probably going to be quite extreme. The catch 22 is that you go through life only experiencing it through your own perspective and so it's very hard to comprehend what it's like for people with very good or very bad genetics. You probably have some idea of how hard you have to try at things to make progress and you naturally infer that onto other people which is a mistake. One of the biggest determining factors in how much muscle you gain is the number of challenging sets you do each week and if you skipping days here or there, or even weeks, then obviously your average weekly volume is dramatically reduced and so will be your gains. Now I am making this video for people who actually go to the gym, so I'm going to try and give an answer for what the typical gym goer can expect in terms of muscle gain. I will assume they are training pretty regularly. I think that most people watching this are probably training four or five times a week. This is how smart you're training. It's things like your exercise selection, your programming, your intensity regulation, volume, frequency, rep ranges. Now, we don't know categorically the best way to train. We have a lot of research that gives us good guidelines for a lot of those things that I mentioned, but there are still gaps in the research. There are seemingly contradictory results. And what we do have still needs some level of interpretation. You also have to think about how a lot of these factors marry together and how you can offer and get similar results with different combinations of these. The good news is what we do know is probably the stuff that's responsible for the biggest return on investment or the fundamentals as I would like to call them. There's probably not going to be any new research that comes out that unveils some new method of training that allows people to get 50% more gains, probably not even 5% more gains. And so whilst your training efficiency can make a huge difference to your results, once you make sure you're nailing the fundamentals, all the rest is far less consequential. Speaking generally, if you're younger, you're going to have higher test levels, you'll probably be less prone to injury, and you'll probably recover from your training faster. Now, I don't want to worry everyone because although your test will probably peak in your early to mid 20s and then start declining it will decline quite slowly until you're pretty much into your 40s according to my youtube demographics that means the majority of you are pretty safe you'll still probably notice the difference between training when you're 18 and training when you're 35 but it's not going to hold you back majorly you've probably heard of the term newbie gains which is just used to describe the hyper responsiveness to training people experience when they first start out at the gym now i'd go as far as to say that this is probably more important
on an actual age to an extent in the sense that a 30 year old who's never touched a weight will probably make gains faster than a 20 year old who's been lifting for five years at least to begin with it goes without saying that insufficient calories or protein will massively hinder your results it's actually quite a travesty because some people are doing all the training and literally would just see a huge difference by increasing their protein intake and then of course being generally well nourished in terms of micronutrients is a given if you basically want to perform well in anything in very simple terms resistance training damages your muscle fibers those fibers then repair and grow back bigger the more damage you do i.e training the more repair there is to do more damage more repair more gains however you can look at it from both directions to actually inflict that damage you need the energy levels to get through a sufficiently intense workout for that you need to be well slept and well rested to begin with if you're training on a shit sleep you're probably doing quite a lot of wasted sets and i would say people not having the energy to train productively is probably just as much or more of a problem than people not being able to actually undergo the physiological muscle repair process now let's get to answering these questions first how fast could somebody build muscle under ideal conditions well let's define ideal conditions i would say they include being young being new to training training five plus times per week recovering adequately with a low stress lifestyle eating in a calorie surplus with at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight training each muscle group with 15 plus sets per week split over two to three workouts and finally having good genetics now we don't have any examples of studies in which the participants satisfy all of those criteria, but we can get part way there. This study comparing the effects of soy to skimmed milk had young, untrained men training five times per week over a 12 week period. They followed a PPL split, their intensity was regulated, rest times were monitored, overall training efficiency looks good. We don't know about their total caloric or protein intake, and whilst they weren't allowed to participate in other recreational activities, we don't know how stressful their lifestyles were or how well they were sleeping at night. Two people stood out, gaining seven and 7.5 kilograms of lean mass over the 12 week period. Now maybe these these are just genetic outliers but this study was only done on 56 people and there were two of these that gained so much muscle so in all likelihood people that have this kind of potential to build muscle probably aren't that rare and there also must exist people with even better genetics so if we assume that there must be some people out there with better genetics how much could they have gained in the same 12 week period maybe an extra kilogram I think given that we've got one person gaining seven and one gaining 7.5 kilograms in this time frame, that's probably quite a safe assumption. So we'll say 8.5 kilograms. Now we can also assume that although the training protocols seemed quite good in this study, they're probably not 100% optimal. What if we gave this person the best training program we could, a structured regimented nutrition plan and ensure that they were getting at least eight hours of sleep every night? How much could they have gained then? Maybe another kilogram again i think i'm being quite cautious but fair so we've taken the actual data of a person gaining 7.5 kilograms over 12 weeks and after a couple of relatively safe cautious assumptions i'm actually confident in saying that some people under ideal conditions are probably able to gain 9.5 to 10 kilograms of muscle in a 12 week period now that is crazy but i think we've got there quite logically it's also not helpful whatsoever because there aren't that many people in ideal conditions who also have the most elite genetics so let's move on to the second question what can people typically expect if you're not a genetic outlier but your training and nutrition is generally on point. Well, in the same study, the group that consumed milk gained an average of four kilograms of lean mass. They also lost an average of one kilogram of body fat, which implies that the calories probably weren't excessively high. So I think if you're new to lifting and you're between the ages of 18 and 30 and stick to a well-regimented training and nutrition plan, you can probably aim for a bit higher than them. So I'd say with average genetics, four to five kilograms of muscle over the 12 week period is probably doable if you do most things right most of the time. Now that's a bit more helpful, but what if you're not new to lifting? Well, if you've had a break from lifting and lost a lot of gains, you'll probably be able to remake those gains you lost faster than you first gained them in the first place. I said gain too many times. So that's good news anyway. But what if you're an actual experienced lifter? This study looking at training frequency saw participants gain an average of one kilogram of lean mass over an eight week period. These people had been lifting for about four years on average. 
but there are a few caveats to mention. These people were only training three times per week. I think most of us can probably manage four or five. This data includes a few women who will obviously gain less muscle mass than men, and so that will also bring the average down. And the average age of these study participants was 34 years old. So let's say an average 34 year old with four years training experience can gain about a kilogram of muscle in eight weeks, training three times per week. What can that tell us about what's possible for the archetypal viewer of this YouTube channel? I'd say they're probably 25 years old, training four or five times a week, and have a couple of years lifting experience. So that we're working over the same time period as before, let's call it 1.5 kilograms over 12 weeks instead of one kilogram over eight weeks. So for training age, I'm not actually gonna mark this up, mainly because the average number of training days per week for the participants of this study was just under three. And that means that even though they may have been lifting for four years, it wasn't particularly frequently, and they probably still had quite a lot of muscle mass left to gain before hitting their genetic ceiling and that's really more important than simply the total amount of time that's passed since you first touched a weight. I'm going to say that training four or five times a week is probably going to have you gaining muscle faster than if you just train three. So let's mark that up to 1.75 kilograms over the 12 weeks. Again, being quite cautious. Then I think it's also fair to assume that a 25 year old would probably make gains faster than a 34 year old. And let's also add a bit just to account for the average across both genders. Putting it together, I think it's probably fair to say that a 25 year old male with one to two years training experience, training four or five times per week, and staying on top of their nutrition and recovery, could realistically hope for two to 2.5 kilograms of lean mass gain over a 12 week period. So this is what we have. Over 12 weeks, in absolutely ideal conditions, some people may be able to gain 9.5 to 10 kilograms of muscle. The typical newbie lifter with some dedication could probably gain between four and five kilograms of muscle. A typical lifter with one to two years training experience can probably gain two to 2.5 kilograms of muscle. So there's probably quite a bit of difference between being in your first few months of lifting and being in your second or third year of lifting. And then again, as you get closer and closer to your genetic ceiling, gains will slow down. I would say as a complete guess, you can probably cut your rate of muscle gain in half for every few years that you've been training regularly. And then by the time you've been training for over a decade, you're probably gonna start thinking less about how fast you can make gains and more about whether you can actually make any that are visible to the naked eye. So I hope that helped to give you some general idea of what you can expect in different scenarios. At the end of the day, you just have to do the best you can with what you have and try and be as patient as possible. You probably feel like you're in a bit of a rush to make gains when you first start lifting, but eventually you probably just enjoy lifting and see gains as a bonus. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I think I don't think I've got anything else to say. Click all my links in the description for Black Friday shenanigans. See you later. Shenanigans. Zoo! Jordy Lenny is my hero!